Hey guys, what's up? Gotis here bringing you another hot video and today we're going to be talking about how to draft and helping new players that maybe get into the game only playing quick match um, break that barrier of getting into unranked draft and then team and hero league. Um, it could be daunting to step into that, especially if you're unfamiliar with it. Maybe it's your first MOBA. Uh, you've never done a drafting type game before. Uh, it seems a little complicated compared to Quick Match, where you can just pick a hero and go. So I kind of wanted to do a presentation on how to get through the draft. Um, we're not going to be talking about real specific team comps or anything. It's going to be kind of basic, but I think it'll give you guys enough information to get going. Uh, before I begin, I just want to say big thank you to The King Live. Um, Recently helped me kind of get back into content creation and has been helping me out with some things. So if you guys haven't already, definitely go check out his YouTube channel and his Twitch channel. Uh, he's an awesome streamer, awesome YouTube creator. He does hilarious videos, like really sharp, witty, comical videos. Plus, he's mechanically extremely good when he plays video games. So it's just a really potent combination. Uh, so definitely go check him out. So... The first thing we kind of need to talk about is uh, what do you need before you go into a draft? So uh, you want to have a diverse enough hero pool that you can really fill out the draft appropriately. To me, and this is going to differ based on who you ask, but to me, that means you have three to five comfort pick heroes so heroes that you could jump on at any given moment and you don't need to research build. You just feel extremely comfortable on them. Um, if you start saying you have more than five, you probably water down and you don't realize it. Three to five really just super comfortable picks. You could jump into them anytime. Um, preferably amongst two of the classes. Uh, when I say classes, I'm not talking about the current system of warrior, assassin, specialist, healer. Uh, I'm talking about a more broad melee ranged bruiser, tank, support, healer uh, kind of set of classes. So if you had four heroes that you were just super solid on, two of them were ranged damage dealers, uh, and two of them were melee damage dealers, awesome. You're, you, you've got that box ticked off. Additionally, you want two to four backup picks Preferably in the other roles. Um, you want to be able to be the person that can fill out the team as needed. And you don't want to be the person that is completely inflexible and starts setting the whole team off. We've all played with that person and it sucks. So we don't want to be that person, right? So let's make sure that we have two to four other heroes amongst the other roles that maybe you're not super solid on. But you're at least comfortable enough, you know the abilities, you kind of know some synergies amongst the talents. Uh, maybe you watch some YouTube videos of a pro player or a grandmaster player and you're like, oh, that's a pretty cool build. Like I kind of remember what he did. Um, and you could, you know, kind of stumble your way through it a little bit. Um, that That's good. So if you have three to five comfort picks, two to four backup picks, uh, you're probably good to go. Obviously, at that point, the more heroes that you can flex into, the better. Um, but if you have that core, you're set. Um, the other thing you kind of need to know is you need to know the basic team comp. Now, the, the meta now is kind of changing very fast and rapid. Uh, it wasn't that long ago that everything was a two tank meta. Then it was a two healer meta. Uh, and then they nerfed healers. And now it, there was like a hyper carry meta in there somewhere. It was like all sorts of metas. Um, but for unranked, and kind of basic lower level bronze, silver, gold, even into platinum and diamond. Um, it, you just need to know at least some basic things of what it is that you're looking for. Uh, your team will talk about what it is you want to do. And we'll talk about some general draft strategies. But at the least, you need a healer. You need a tank. You want a range damage dealer. <clears throat> Those are your three kind of critical ones. And that's why going forward, um, Blizzard made the changes to quick match that they haven't been implemented yet, but every quick match team is going to have a healer, a tank, and a ranged damage dealer. There's a reason they picked those three classes. 
uh, that every quick match team has to have, and it'll be two fills. Um, and that's kind of how you want your draft to go at, at a at a minimum. Uh, so you want a healer, you want a tank, you want range damage dealer. You then kind of want to think about maybe a solo laner on a lot of maps, uh, especially three lane maps. Um, somebody that can get the bottom lane by themselves or maybe split lanes really easily. Uh, somebody like a Malthiel or a Sonya or a Thrall that can stand on their own uh, and stay in lane for extended periods of time. And then your your fifth person is going to be kind of a fill or a flex uh, based on maybe what the other team is doing, what you're trying to do. Um, there could be some alterations to that, depending on if you guys are trying to do something cheeky, but that'll be a good start. So the next thing we need to kind of do is go over the the draft UI, if you will. So here you have your draft UI, and this is just going to be the worst PowerPoint you've ever seen. But I figured it's real quick and dirty. It'll get us through for the purpose of what we need to do. On the left-hand side, you're going to find your teams, or excuse me, a team's uh, lineup. Now, I was on this team, so I can see their names. But you could be the red team on the other side. Uh, in that case, you know, you're over here. So <laughs> pretty simple. One team is going to be on the left-hand side. One team is going to be on the right-hand side. Blue team, red team. Simple. Okay. Top left is going to be the blue team's bands. There are now three bands. And on the top right is obviously the red team's bands. Down on the bottom, you're going to have your hero interface. Um, you can browse heroes there, search heroes. Your favorite heroes are going to be displayed there. Those are the ones that you manually tag as favorites. Uh, so as you can see, kind of a diverse pool there for me. Um, additionally, up on the top left and top right portrait frames of player one and yours truly, uh, you will see some poorly added in crowns that I, I terribly photoshopped in there. Um, and I did that because I didn't wait long enough to grab this screen when I played this game. Um, <coughs> somebody is going to get denoted as a team captain. Now, my understanding, and I don't believe that this has changed, is it's the person with the highest MMR in that group. So um, if this was unranked draft, which this particular ma match it is, if I had the highest MMR in that an unranked draft compared to the other four people on my team, I'm going to be the team captain. It's not always a player on top. It could be any one of the five slots. And it's not always the same slot for the enemy team. But I just threw them up there just to kind of show you what those look like. They're little crowns. Those are going to be your team captains. Uh, those team captains are going to be responsible for your bans. So if you're wondering why you're always stuck banning... Uh, it's because you're really good. Your MMR is good. And if you're wondering why you never get to ban, maybe your MMR isn't that high. You don't get the opportunity to do it. But that's okay. Just keep working at it. You'll get there. Um, there are times where I'll play five, six ranked games in a row, and I ban every time. And there are times where I will go five, six games and never ban. So it's just the way it is. Uh, so now that that's out of the way, a couple other things that I we need to talk about. And then we're going to go into the actual draft uh, so the first thing you want to do is confirm your map. It's in the top center of the screen. Unlike Quick Match or a Verse AI game, if you're a new player, maybe that's what you're sticking to, you get to see your map before you pick your character here. This is incredibly important because this will give you a really big idea on what to pick and what to ban and what to be on the lookout for. Uh, additionally, you want to hover your hero early when you get into the draft. And by hover, I mean actually click on the hero you want to play. It'll show up in your portrait frame. So if I had clicked on Tracer, for example, there'd be a little Tracer uh, portrait in my block up on the top left, and it would let my team know that I've highlighted Tracer, I'm interested in playing Tracer. The enemy team can't see what you're doing, so don't worry about that. Uh, this is a really easy way to communicate to your team who it is that you want to play. Um, if you hover a tracer and, you know, maybe you change because your team comp changes, all right? So maybe tracer is not what I want to go, but I, I only really play range DPS, so now I'm going to play Jaina. We need a mage, so I'm going to play Jaina. Uh, and it gets down to you and nobody picked a healer, and you're like, hey, I was hovering this DPS player, like, the whole time. Like, that's all I play. Um, it, it does happen, and it's frustrating, uh, but it's your best chance of letting your team know 
uh, what it is you want to play. The other thing that you can do to help your team understand what it is you want to do is make sure that you type to your team what it is you want to do. Uh, I get really frustrated when players don't communicate in the draft. Um, the first thing I always do as soon as we get into a draft in the bottom right, I just type, hi team, hi team. That's all you got to type. Um, that way they know you're trying to open up dialogue and then maybe ask a question. Hey, what does everybody like to play? Maybe you just throw out there, I'm a, I'm a tank main. I play tanks, so don't worry about tanks. I got tanks. Um, maybe you want to say, hey, who's going to heal? Make sure that that's clarified up front. So communicate with your team and make sure you know what everybody wants to do. The other thing is don't play somebody that you can't play. If it's going to be a detriment, you're better off playing a character that you guys don't need uh, that you're much better with if it's similar. And what I mean by that is if the team desperately needs ranged damage, right? They just they need ranged damage. But you're not comfortable with any of the range damage characters left that are available. Just say, hey, I know this is what we need, but I promise you guys, I am an absolutely baller butcher. Like, I know it's not exactly what we need, but trust me, my butcher plays really solid. I'm really comfortable on them. Uh, I could play butcher really well, and I, I know it's not perfect, but it's going to be the best pick for me. I don't think any reasonable person, I've never seen it, is going to be upset with that. What you don't want to do is be the guy that needs to flex as a healer and be like, I, yeah, no, I, I'm playing Butcher. I, I know I'm the last pick and we don't have a healer, but I only play, like, I play Butcher. There are going to be some times you're going to have to play heroes you're not comfortable with. And if you're stuck doing that, let them know. Just say, hey, I've never freaking healed before. I've never played this healer. I'm not sure exactly what I'm doing. So keep that in mind when you guys are diving in. Um, you know, you don't have a pro healer here. So be honest and upfront. You don't have to be a jerk about it. Uh, but be honest. Have an open dialogue with your team. And then that way, there's no surprises. If they act surprised about it later, you could be like, hey, I told you, dude. I told you. Um, so... Let's go ahead and we're going to kind of get into this, um, the draft order a little bit. So throughout the draft, you want to keep your eye open on what the enemy team is doing. You want to think about how your team synergizes. And you want to think about how you counter the enemy team and how they can counter you. Those are the three points you kind of want to just keep in the back of your mind. <clears throat> so with that said, what happens first? Blue team, team one, bans a hero. Um, with that ban, you want to ban an OP hero on the map. Uh, somebody that is really strong on Alterac Pass. How do you do this? Well, if you're not familiar, and this is going to be something I'm going to reference through the rest of this, so let me pull it up for you guys. There is a site called Hot Slugs. Uh, this is whoop -a -doop, hot slugs com. You can make an account here. Uh, you can do a free account. You don't need to do a premium if you don't want to. Uh, and on here, you find a lot of really cool information, what builds are uh, have high win rates, what talents are have high win rates or pick rates, uh, how heroes are doing, popularity, win percentage, uh, the delta change uh, in that. So a lot of cool statistics here. But what you at least in this point want to do, as soon as that map uh, gets announced, so Alterac, right, you want to go to Hero and Map Statistics under the Statistics tab. I like to change this to maybe like a week or two. Um, Orphea just came out, I think, in this week here. I think she was out by the 18th. I don't know for sure. Um, but you want to make sure that it's not going to be super skewed. Uh, all leagues. I like to do this plus or minus the league I'm playing. So if I'm a gold player, I want to pick platinum, gold, and silver. If I am a platinum player, I want to pick gold, platinum, diamond. Uh, because usually you're going to have players from plus or minus one league in your thing. If you're a silver player, you want to pick brown, silver, or gold. Uh, so whatever it is that you want to, that you're playing in, you kind of want to narrow it down to that. Um, so we're going to do diamond, platinum, gold. And then we're going to do team and hero league. Uh, this is just selected by default. Hero level, five plus, uh, all game lengths is fine. And we want to go to Alterac Pass. So what can we learn from this? All right, so here we could see um, heroes, and this always cracks me up how Cho and Gaul have different statistics. 
that's kind of funny how that works. Uh, but we could see here a uh, win percentage, and we're going to sort this by win percentage. That's what matters the most. Uh, on the different heroes, um, evidently Malganus has an over 100% popularity, which is pretty asinine. Um, and you could start seeing their popularity, their game, number of games are banned, played, their win percentage, etc., etc., uh, for this map in our tier of play. So what do we do with this information? Um, first thing you want to do is ban a hero that is obscenely strong. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to first ban Cho. This is only a 5.9% popularity, which means you're probably not going to see a Cho Gaul. Um, it's pretty rare uh, that you're going to see this. Lucio, 12% with a 60% win rate. That's pretty strong. Plus, it's a healer. Um, it's not a, you know, it's 800 games played. Um, you know, yeah, okay. Alex Straza, 15%. You know, but then you get down here. Okay, Malganus has a 100% pick rate. 100%. You are guaranteed on Alterac Pass and Diamond Platinum Gold in the last two weeks to have played against a Malganus. Now keep in mind this is by the statistics uploaded to Hotslog, so that's not necessarily true, but you get my drift. He's got 55% win rate. This is maybe a hero you want to ban. Uh, Rainer is a hero, 25% pick rate uh, that you want to ban. Um, you know, the Lucio, the Alex Straza, the Kel'Thuzad. These are all high, you know, fairly high pick heroes. Usually above 10% is what your kind of cutoff is. Uh, with high win rates that your team is not going to play. Keep in mind, if you are banning and you are the blue team, you have the first pick. So if your first pick person is saying, hey, I play Malganus, don't ban him. Don't ban him. Uh, let the enemy team waste a ban on him or let them ignore it and hope that they don't do their homework, and then your player gets the hero that they love to play that has a really high win rate. So that's where you could find this information out. Um, additionally, keep in mind, there are going to be some heroes like Orphea. 77.5% popularity. She's in a lot of games, but she's only got a 46% win rate. You're more likely to lose with her than win with her. Is she extremely popular? Yes. Is she worth banning? Maybe not in this, not in these three tiers. Not on Alterac. It uh, doesn't seem to be that case. So uh, just kind of keep that in mind. Additionally, uh, you know, Zul, 55% win rate, but only a 1.9% pick rate. Don't ban Zul. You know, like that's that's not going to be the answer there. So I just kind of want to show you guys Hods Logs because uh, that's where you're going to get the information. Next, Team 2 is going to ban a hero. They're going to do the same exact thing. Uh, they don't get the first pick, so they literally just want to eliminate heroes from the first team. Um, you know, you can always gamble and hope that a hero will fall to you. It happens, but that's a mighty big gamble. And in ranked play, maybe not a gamble you want to take. Next, Team 1 bans a hero again. Uh, it's pretty repetitive. Team 2 bans a hero. So those bands, these four bands, uh, are pretty important. You want to get rid of really strong heroes on that map uh, and heroes that your team collectively as a group agrees to ban. Maybe everybody on your map or on your team says, hey, you know, I know maybe we don't need to worry about Genji based on the numbers, but I really don't want to go up against a Genji if they happen to have a good Genji player. Uh, let's just ban Genji. And everybody says, yeah, you know what, I'm cool with that. Then ban Genji. Next. Team 1 picks the first hero. This is extremely, extremely important pick. Um, aside from being the start of your team, it's a takeaway from the enemy team. Um, maybe you didn't ban Malganus. The enemy team is like, oh my god, they didn't ban Malganus. Can you believe these idiots? They didn't fucking ban him. And they're getting ready to build around Malganus. Now you just drafted Malganus. Um, maybe it's not even the tank that you wanted or the hero that you wanted the most, but you're like, hey, this is way too strong to let them have. Maybe Genji got through and you're like, you know what? I don't want them to have this Genji. We're going to take this Genji for ourselves. 
Um, so you can use it in that sense, uh, but you want to pick up somebody that is going to be kind of generic. You don't want to give away what your strategy is. Um, and somebody strong. So you, you don't want to pick a crapshoot hero here. The next thing that happens is red team picks their first and second hero simultaneously. Um, this is to counter the fact that, that blue team gets the first bands and the first pick. The red team gets to pick two at a time here. Um, and they're basically going to set themselves up um, as a takeaway pick from the enemy team, even though it's the second pick overall. And they want to get somebody that's strong on the map. Um, you know, whatever that whatever hero fell through, that Alex Straza, that Lucio maybe fell through, that's where they want to grab their healer um, so they don't risk losing them down the draft later. Next, blue team picks two heroes, their second and their third hero, uh, and they're basically going to be doing the same exact thing. They're going to pick a strong, uh, a hero that's strong on the map, and then since they're getting their third pick, um, they got to start thinking more about team comp and synergy at this point. Um, you know, maybe you just start filling out what you guys need. Hey, we're getting to the third pick here. We still don't have plans for a tank. We still don't have plans for a healer. Um, so that's why you want to constantly be communicating. Um, so need synergies are going to be in that third pick. Then we go into what's called halftime. Halftime is the next set of bans, and red team gets the advantage here. They get to ban a hero. Uh, the reason it works this way is because blue team now has three of the five slots filled. So it's a pretty good idea of what it is they're going for. Um, if they don't have a healer, um, if they don't have a tank, you pretty much know who to ban here, right? Uh, they don't have a healer. All right, well, Alex Straz is still available. She's strong on this map. Let's ban her because uh, they need a healer. Uh, additionally, maybe they have kind of a, a team comp that you're familiar with. You know, maybe they're going for a really heavy front line and you're like, oh, you know what? I just, I know these guys are going to try and pick up a Diablo. They're just going to, I know it. Let's get rid of Diablo. So they don't, they, they're going for it. They're really squishy right now. They're going to go for somebody big and bruisery. Um, so you take that away. Maybe they're going for like an Abathur team comp or something crazy like that. Um, that's where you're going to start taking away those heroes. Blue team's going to do the exact same thing at this point. They're going to have a harder time of it because red team's only showing two of their five cards. Um, so it could be more of a challenge for the blue team. Next, red team picks third and fourth. Uh, they basically start to round out their team really well. Um, these are going to be needs and synergy picks. Maybe they'll start thinking about some counters. You know, hey, the enemy team has... You know, that Genji or that Illidan, you know, let's let's get somebody with a blind. Let's we need a healer. You know, maybe we wanted uh you know Kerosene, but you know, they're really melee focused right now. Let's get Lily. She's got a blind. Wh whatever crazy thoughts are going on. I'm just trying to give you guys some some examples, some ideas to kind of help you work through it. Uh next, blue team picks their fourth and fifth hero. Um <clears throat> excuse me. The fourth and fifth hero are going to be your roundouts. Um, it's going to finalize your team. Uh, you want to kind of surprise the enemy team as best you can uh, with who those picks are. Um, they're extremely important picks for the blue team. Those last two picks are critical. So it can really set the draft um, up nicely or set it up for failure at that point if you don't round out the team appropriately. So... Again, think about those kind of team comps. Do we have a solo laner? Do we have a range damage dealer? Do we have a healer? Do we have a tank? Um, do we have somebody that can answer something that the enemy team is doing at this point? We know four of their heroes. Uh, let's, you know, let's make sure we have an answer for them. Let's make sure our, you know, heroics kind of work together. There's some wombo combos maybe we can do here. Next uh, and last, team two picks the fifth and final hero. This is called last pick. Uh, it is, I would say, truthfully, more important than first pick. Last pick is a chance to pick a hero that the enemy team cannot counter. Maybe you look at the enemy team and go, holy shit, they don't have any way to answer um, a Jaina. They just can't answer a Major. They can't answer a Sergeant Hammer. Um, they don't have any way to get to a Sergeant Hammer, 
well, fuck it. We're going to pick Sergeant Hammer here. Uh, so that could be what that last pick is. And then once that hammer is locked in, there's nothing the blue team can do. Uh, they're stuck. They've got their five picks and that's it. No mulligans. Um, so it's pretty, pretty important uh, that that last pick, um, aside from rounding out your team, throw something at the enemy team that really makes them think twice. That's all I really had on these drafts, guys. I didn't want to like hammer home a bunch of real specific points. I just wanted to give you guys some general ideas about what you need um, to get into draft play, kind of how to read the UI a little bit, because if you're a brand new player, it can be very overwhelming, and it's okay to say that. It's also okay to tell your team, hey, I never have done this before, or I have very little draft experience. Tell me what you guys want from me because, you know, if you don't ask, uh, they're not going to tell you. Um, so always keep that in your back pocket. You can always just say, hey, I don't know who to pick here. You know, I'm, I'm comfortable on these heroes. Who do you guys want? If nothing else, throw it out to them and it shows that you're willing to cooperate. I hope that you guys found this video educational and helpful. Um, I didn't want to distract you guys with my ugly mug on the webcam as well. So let me know your thoughts about it. Trying to get some ideas on what to do for future content. Um, and again, I want to give a big shout out to The King Live. Please be sure to go give him a follow on Twitch, a sub on YouTube, sub on Twitch. If you got an extra five bucks a month lying around or you got that Twitch Prime, uh, maybe that you're holding on to and uh, you're looking for somebody else to throw it at, you know, you don't want to throw it at your boy Gotis Gaming, that's okay. That's all right. I still love you guys. Uh, go throw it to the King Live then. He, he deserves it. Thank you guys so much. Any questions that you have, leave them below in the comment section. I will try to answer any questions you guys have. Peace.